Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, I need my spirit inspired. <laughs> We're going to talk to Robin Williams. Yeah, yeah, I know. We talked to him recently. We've talked to him a lot because he's great. That's why. He also has a playlist here on Above Life Channel. So if you like Robin Williams and you're interested in what he has to say, he's very much a philosoph philosophical type in the afterlife, um, go ahead and check out the playlist. Today, we're going to talk to him about courage. Okay. So let me bring him in. He comes in, he's like, courage, courage, courage. Kind of like the lion in uh, the Wizard of Oz. Courage, the courage to be yourself, Bridget. Isn't that really what you mean? <laughs> I'm like, yes, it does. Okay, I get the whole Wizard of Oz thing. We're not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. Things are changing quickly is kind of what's coming through. Thank you, Robin. That's interesting. All right. So for you Wizard of Oz fans, yes, I know we need to channel Judy Garland again, don't we? Yes, we do. We should probably chat with her again as well. But right now we're talking to Robin about courage. So the courage to be yourself is what he's bringing through. Okay. Yes. This is what I would like to talk about. What does that even mean? So Robin, as a human being, it's hard to know who we are because we're ever evolving and always changing. And I get a lot of, um, of conversations with my clients about, I don't even know who I am really. Like, I don't know what I like anymore. I don't know maybe what I want. I am too busy living my day-to-day -day life and, and keeping up with the life that I've created for myself now. Like, how do I make a change or how do I even know what's right for me or what I want? You know, like, how do I know who I am now versus who I was when I was 18, 25, 31, 40, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Do you have some insights? Because I would like to know that too, especially because I'm on the eve of a birthday coming up. It's not that big of one, you guys. Next year, we're going to have a big decade party for me. That's for sure. We're going to do that. So what can you share with us? Okay. He looks a little scruffy. He's got, now he looks almost like, um, kind of reminds me of Dead Poet Society. Is that... I can't remember what you looked like. And no, no, not to put aside. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Goodwill hunting. Um, I see him like in a beard and with a hat on, like one of those, um, the hats with like the brim kind of comes down like a golf hat kind of thing. That's what it looks like. Um, a little bit scruffy, kind of professor like, but that's how he will show up to me when he's like being philosophical. And so this is a philosophical topic. So what do you have to share? Okay, I'm seeing some things. I'm actually getting visuals from him. So just let me stay with me because I want to show you how this works, especially when you are working with your intuition and trying to figure out how to make things, what things mean, because it can be hard to interpret the meaning of visual clairvoyant images. So I'm going to show you my process, like just full out show you how this works for me. Got it? You know, I'm a psychic medium, right? Like that's why you're here on Above Life Channel. Okay, okay. Just checking, just checking. All right. Okay, so I'm seeing a golf course. A nice manicured golf course. It looks perfect. The grass looks perfect. And the people dress a certain way. There's like expectation, dress code. There's understanding, there's rules. He's, he's sharing, okay. So there's rules of engagement, rules of, of the way that you behave, the way that you dress, the way that the golf course should look. There's all these expectations, rules of engagement, clearly defined, right? I mean, I don't know if it's like this now, but back in the day, like 20 years ago, when I used to golf, we used to have to like, like proper attire was like a collared shirt, you know, like a polo or something like that, even for women. Right. And, um, like there was just, and, and usually it wasn't jean shorts. It was like, you know, khakis or like a golf skirt or something like that, right? Um, now, it's, I'm sure now it's different, but that's kind of the vibe I'm getting is like, there's a standard. Yeah, standard is a good word. If you're gonna journal, if you're a journaler, use the word standard to journal about this and how it applies to you and your life and your core values, standards. Some people have high standards and some people, 
adjust their standards. Oh, standards and boundaries. Ooh, oh, you're giving me a lot of content here. Standards and boundaries, boundaries and standards. Ooh, 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 we got to write about this. These are good things. I'm actually going to write this down. Boundaries. Standards. That would be a good Sunday morning coffee, which is my podcast, by the way. All right. So what is this about? Clearly, there are expectations. So this is a metaphor. Clearly, there are expectations. You have a set of standards, uh, understanding based upon where you're going, what environment you're in. So like on a golf course, it's this way. When you go to a school, it's this way. If you're in a private school, it's this way, because then you have you know uniforms and all that. If you go to um, a, a, a restaurant, for example, and it's a, a certain type or class of restaurant, there's certain things that you expect there that would be provided that like lin really nice linen tablecloths and great music and fancy stuff, right? Or in, versus if you're going to McDonald's, for example, in and out, give me my food, you know, give me extra ketchup with that. I got it in a bag. I can sit here, there, I can leave whatever very, you know, on the go right? Different standards, different expectations. This he's showing me, this is a reflection, a direct reflection of your experiences. So when you're asking about having courage, and then he adds to be yourself, how do you show up in these different environments? How do you adapt and adjust your behavior to fit in to that environment? For some, it is an invitation to step up and into another version of themselves. So it is creative play. Get all dressed up, a nice black dress and high heels, maybe some nice earrings, great perfume. And you go out on the town and have a beautiful fancy dinner. You rise to meet that occasion you step in and be creative and expressive in a way that you would where you wouldn't normally experience that if you're going to the grocery store, for example. So it's an invitation to taste, to experience and explore and to express this fancy part of yourself. I should have worn a fancy dress to do that. I had known Robin, we we're gonna talk about that. I would totally have like dressed up. <laughs> for this one, but it's an opportunity for expression, he says. How do you show up in these different places? And he says, the, the part that is in conflict, he says, the part that is in conflict for everyone is this feeling of needing to belong and how you adjust your behavior because you feel as though you have to not by choice, but because of a recognition or acknowledgement that what you have and are already is not enough. And he says, it's not about your dress code. It's not about you can't go into that restaurant with jeans and vans and a hoodie. It's not about that. It's not about that. It's not about the look. It is about the essence of the energy of who you are and how you interpret the need to change or conform in order to fit in, belong to that place, area, scenario. And so many people will be in conflict about going out to the fancy restaurant because they feel as though they have to change themselves in order to fit in there. But that is not the truth. He says, that is a cop out. That's a load of crap. And he's swearing. It's a load of crap. There are many places that you have opportunities to express yourself in different ways. And if you feel triggered by having to meet a dress code or not swear, then there's a part of you that doesn't want to express in that way. Or there's a part of you that's oppressing the possibility potential to express in that way. It's not about conforming. It's about choice. It's about selection and it's about expression. Wow. Okay. So it's about choice, expression, selection, selection. He says, it's not about having to fit someone else's ideal. It's about understanding that there's different places and ways that you can bring forward different parts of yourself. 
it's not because who you are isn't good enough. It's because that part of yourself maybe doesn't need to be expressed right now or in particular. So what I'm feeling is this conflict. He's showing me relationship conflict. So say your, your partner loves fancy dinners and it's like Valentine's Day is coming up, right? When I'm recording this and your partner likes something fancy and nice, right? So you got to get dressed up and go out to a nice restaurant. And that's not your thing. You hate that. You want pizza and beer and a movie and that's it, right? And your partner wants something special for Valentine's Day, right? So you may have a decision to make. You get to select how you're going to present yourself. And it's not just for you, though. You also have, are feeling into, because you're in a relationship, how you would want to express for that person, for them to be able to be supported while they're expressing in this beautiful, fancy restaurant. So you aren't there to, to express for you maybe directly, but you're there to express your love for that person and support for that person as that person steps into this environment and feels fancy, even if you don't feel so fancy and it's not your thing and you don't have to do it, but you will because you know that there is a need for that person that you love so much to feel expressed in that way. And so you will express your love to that person by showing up for them as they show up and express. So then you do it, you go. And maybe you don't wear the pretty dress, but you wear your khakis <laughs> and you wear some cute little boots. You know, like that. You can still wear your utility jacket, like a black t-shirt underneath, totally fine. But you adjust, you select, and you support the expression. See, this is where the conflict does kind of arise. It's like, you're not doing this for them and sacrificing yourself. You're not sacrificing. You're doing something in a way in which you are showing up through love to support another. It's like weddings too. Like people don't necessarily love to go to weddings, you know, and you have to dress nice and all that. You're not going to go to your friend's wedding and, you're, and, and wear, you know, gym shorts and your Nike t-shirt. You're just not going to do that. And I'm using, I'm using clothing because it's so overtly obvious, right? So, cause that's what he's showing me is through the third eye. He's showing me the clothing and the external expression, like the obvious what you can see, but he's like, there are subtleties. There are subtle cues. And it's important, he says, for you to understand those subtle cues within yourself, how you are feeling when you feel almost triggered or you feel unsure about something. Ask yourself, he says, ask yourself more deeply, what is this? What is this? You might want to start by asking where in your body are you noticing this most? Are you tense in the shoulders? Does it, is it triggering like this stress response where you need to cuddle in and protect yourself? Because this is like a heart thing. It's like instantly protect my heart, which might mean that in the past you've had some kind of trauma or some kind of experience that wasn't so loving and great in regards to whatever is is, is kind of starting to show up because you're in a new place or you heard a song or you saw something on, on um, YouTube or you are you know, in the doctor's office and you see something on the TV screen or you hear a conversation in the grocery store with two people talking and you have kind of a, or maybe it's just a, ugh. maybe there's a little bit of a fiery kind of that comes up inside you like reflux. <laughs> <laughs> because that's kind of like a disgust, almost energy or an annoyance or a uh, uh, agitation or friction energy inside you. That little kind of fiery, like, I'm a little fiery about that. I don't understand why. And it might be a recall that you're having in that moment about a time or an experience where you weren't, you didn't feel safe or where you learned something about people that you love, like maybe your family, your parents or something, were arguing or talking or something like that, or even in a loving situation, like a, a past romance or relationship you're in, where you had an exchange that this is reminding you of that. 
and giving you an opportunity to be present with a part of yourself that maybe you denied or shut down or said, okay, fine, I sac- I'm sacrificing this because this person matters more to me, or I'm going to pretend like this, I don't hear this, or I'm going to ignore this. And all of the things that we ignore become our triggers now. And also things that have caused us pain come up, especially when we're in this state of trying to be able to just live as ourselves. Being courageous or having courage means being willing to be aware. Okay, I need to be really clear. We are talking to Robin Williams and he all this information is coming through me from him. This is not a Bridget thing necessarily. This is a him philosophically sharing and he's really focusing on the heart and the shoulders and there's a meridian that goes across the shoulders and it's about lifting off the weights lifting off the baggage, the burdens that you feel about all of the ways that you haven't, you've had to hold yourself back or hold yourself in or sacrifice something of yourself, a value, a belief or whatever for somebody else. Or you've had an experience where you've been shocked by something you've discovered about other people that you thought were different than they really are, or you see a real side of someone else. And instead of being disgusted or alarmed or angry about that, you could be maybe compassionate about it as a human being, because as you are becoming more of yourself, you will need compassion for yourself. He's like, that's the antidote basically is compassion to every ailment that you have, to the friction, to the stress, to the conflict, to the external stuff, to the overstimulation that you get and all the messages about how you have to be and what you have to do. And he's like, it's really not about belonging to anyone or in any place, it's about belonging inside yourself, being comfortable with yourself in yourself. He says, that is the greatest struggle that you have as a human is to belong to yourself within yourself. Instead of ignoring or being distracted or finding excuses to be angry at external things when you're going to go to a golf course and you got to do the golf coursey stuff, you just got to. They're not trying to change you. Just don't go then. If you don't want to wear the attire or whatever, or you don't like the chemicals they put on the grass, then don't go, don't go. It's easy as that, but don't go. We've used so many excuses. He's showing me like a list of excuses to not be ourselves in the ownership of the power that we have inside of ourselves. And he's showing me all the energies of the chakras. He's like, you have so much energy. He says, you're not even resourcing half of what you're capable of. And then he says, you get derailed by your mind. And there's so many excuses and so many things that have happened to you in your life. And they caught their constant reminders of how you've messed things up and how you're not enough. And he says, everybody's got that. Everybody has that. Even if it doesn't seem like they do the famous people, the famous motivational speakers, the Oprah's of the world, they have shit. Robin Williams is like, we have shit. Everybody does. Don't be mad about it. It's just life. It's just reality. He's like, compost it. Put it in your garden. Let something beautiful grow from that crap. He's like, what do you think fertilizer is? It's shit. Well, I'm sure we're not going to get this video monetized. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Mm -hmm. Do you see how philosophical he is? How incredible the infused knowledge and wisdom that comes from Robin Williams is. And I don't know why him and such in particular is so great. David Bowie's kind of like that too, but oh God, Robin Williams has that. I love that. I would encourage you also to connect like this. And they have conversation and dialogue. So you see how easy it was for me to just talk, 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 talk. That's all the knowledge that comes in in a channeling. It doesn't have to be dictated word for word, verbatim and newsflash. If you think that's how spirit works, you're wrong. It might be like that sometimes, but this isn't. Life is messy. It's not coming out in perfect poetic sentences. It's messy. 
It's a bunch of words on a piece of paper, like a word scramble, and you got to figure it out. But in order to figure it out, you got to show up, you got to try, and it's not going to happen on the first try necessarily. And you have to be willing to release some of your resistance to allow the energy to flow in and through you. And to say to yourself, yeah, I feel like I'm crazy, but I'm not. Is this really happening? Is this really real? Yeah, it is. So you can ask those questions. Fine. But make sure you respond appropriately. Yes, this is real. No, you're not crazy. And in fact, you're probably the one who is not crazy because you're willing to listen, to use the wisdom and the information that is available to you through these psychic channels like this, because that is only going to help your human life experience to integrate more fully your energy and your spirit and your intuition and all of the skills and tools and assets that you have. So that's for me. Stop trying to pretend like you're not intuitive and that you don't have spiritual connection and communication because you do, because we all do. Stop ignoring it. Okay. Courage to be ourselves. Thanks, Robin. I appreciate you. You're awesome. And I appreciate you viewers of Above Life channel on YouTube. If you're looking for more inspiration from me, Bridget, you can check out my other YouTube channel, Fairy Grasshopper, where I do vlogs about psychic topics. Sometimes I do channeling of spirit guides and things like that over there. I have interesting conversations there. And I do also do live streams on Fairy Grasshopper YouTube. You can find me on social media on Instagram, Bridget Inspired. And also on Facebook, Bridget Inspired. If you're looking for a private session with me, go to my Facebook page, Bridget Inspired, and you can click book now button in order to have a session with me. All right. So I hope I, I've inspired your spirit today and filled you with some hope with this cool infused conversation, infused knowledge conversation with Robin Williams in the afterlife. Remember the purpose here of this work is to encourage you to live your best life. This is your life. After all, it's yours and you get to live it. So just live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.